American consumer goes to market. He is bombarded with the claims of advertisers on the air, in the press, from all sides. Often conflicting, these claims range all the way from honest to false, but even the honest, most straightforward claims rarely give the comparative facts the consumer needs if he is to choose intelligently. Looking for answers, the consumer finds questions. Which brand is the best buy? Is price a guide to quality? What's good? What's bad? Who can tell me? To help find answers to the consumer's questions, as in this case by testing new cars for their actual performance, there is an organization. Its job is to supply to several million people who look to it regularly for the truth, buying guidance based on unbiased tests. These New England children are actually at play, but for this same consumer organization, they are also part of a research project as serious, objective, and thorough as another one on a lake in Florida where an outboard goes round and round. Headquarters for this research work on the public's behalf is in Mount Vernon, New York at Consumers Union, chartered 25 years ago as a non-profit membership organization. Chief among its many services is the monthly magazine Consumer Reports. This organization, which accepts no advertising or sponsorship, receives its income from the sale of its publications. Its reader members are a responsive group and their replies to questionnaires are important in determining subjects to be researched and reported on. Devoting its entire income to the cost of its work, Consumers Union links together a well-informed membership in the common interest. The members by mail ballots also annually designate their choices for Consumers Union's board of directors, often eminent economists, scientists, or other professional people, none of whom may have any connection with any manufacturer or distributor of consumer goods. They find their compensation in the organization's mission to serve by exposing deceptive selling practices, by encouraging higher quality standards, and by telling consumers the facts they need before they buy. All the work of CU, as it's called, is supervised by Dexter Masters, the director, who is appointed by the board. With CU's editorial director, Mildred Brady, Masters reviews tabulation of readers' questionnaires. Finding much reader interest in stereo phonographs, they decide the subject is worth looking into. To this end, the department heads meet to plan the study, settling such questions as, which brands and models should be tested? What price range would interest most readers? What performance characteristics would readers want most to know about? The men and women who settle these points bring to bear a knowledge of audio electronics plus long experience in marketing, purchasing, search. When the meeting ends, packaged stereo phonographs is an active project. The specific test methods to be employed and the engineering approach are worked out by technical director Morris Kaplan with Mitchell Cotter, head of the CU Audio Laboratory. The library staff prepares a complete bibliography of technical references and background material for everyone working on the project, while researchers prepare to furnish a running supply of current information. All across the United States, Consumers Union has its own staff of shoppers. On a call from the Market Information Department, they stand ready to purchase products for study. Shoppers are instructed to dress like someone who is buying for personal use and never reveal their mission for Consumers Union.
The shoppers pay for their purchases in cash and, so that there can be no switching of merchandise, they insist on immediate delivery. Meanwhile, at Mount Vernon in CU's audio laboratory, engineers have readied the complex equipment which will be used to test and compare the stereo phonographs. Evaluation will be for quality, for performance, for safety, and for convenience, important considerations in any CU study. In this case, objective tests have been devised to detect and measure distortion and sound, and to record the smoothness of mechanical function, both primers in audio performance. These tests will be applied to all the sample phonographs received and will go on for many weeks. But at CU, there may be at any time 40 to 50 different projects under study in the seven major laboratories. In the chemical laboratory, always one of the most active, a comparison of dozens of brands of competing dog foods may be taking place at the same time and with the same care as a laboratory examination of prepared baby food. For its tests of children's shoes, Consumers Union goes outside its laboratories to a most unbiased group. Footwear is carefully fitted to each of the boys who will wear several pairs in rotation, each pair for a stated length of time under conditions of normal wear and tear. At intervals during 15 weeks, the shoes are examined for appearance and condition. Then in CU's textile laboratory, the shoes are dissected for the final analysis of how they have stood up to the stress of use. Meanwhile, from the automobile test track and other facilities in Connecticut, Chief Automotive Consultant Lawrence Crooks brings to the Mount Vernon headquarters of CU his latest data on cars which the organization has been testing. Publications director David Maness has been waiting to review with Crooks his latest findings, which include subjective evaluations for roadability, ease of handling, and riding comfort of the cars. Already on hand from earlier examinations are all technical specifications. CU regularly tests new models of household appliances to check manufacturers' claims of improvement. Afterwards, many of the samples are sold to staff members and their families. Other samples are donated to hospitals, orphanages, and the like, while automobiles are traded in on the latest models. The test being run on new models of washing machines will check claims of improved washing ability, which may or may not prove to be true. With an exact amount of wash carrying synthetically soiled swatches of material, the correct amount of soap or detergent is put in, just as indicated by the manufacturer. Later checks will cover washing capacity, the amount of electricity consumed, and even measure the amount of water used. To find out how various appliances operate under different weather conditions, CU engineers have designed a chamber where various combinations of temperature and humidity can be provided with precision. The problem at hand is to see whether temperatures rise inside the refrigerator when the room heat is raised from 70 to 90 and even to 110 degrees. By means of thermocouples placed at various positions within the refrigerator, the engineers will determine whether temperatures remain low enough for the proper storage of both fresh and frozen foods. Electrically, the thermocouples transmit the temperature readings past the refrigerator door to recording devices completely outside the test chamber. The data thus received can be interpreted by CU's engineers and will form the basis of a future article in Consumer Reports.
instance, a most essential requirement of a portable TV set is that it be actually light enough to carry, the samples selected for testing are first weighed and then measured to check their bulk. The engineers study picture quality with a standard test pattern broadcast by CU's own closed circuit TV transmitter. It's a painstaking business and it can't be done merely by eye and by good intentions. It requires expensive equipment to measure crispness, fineness of detail, and many other factors. Other rigorous tests can be performed only in the isolation of a per-screened room, a Faraday cage, where radio waves normally in the air cannot enter. There, under carefully controlled conditions, a minute and technically realistic comparison can be made of each of the receiver's performance characteristics for the consumer's guidance. But some products cannot be evaluated by any special equipment, nor yet by any staff of male researchers. So the matter in question was referred to a test group of 50 women who compared ballpoint lipstick with the traditional kinds. Staff members, always on the lookout for products of special interest, spotted an educational toy as something readers might like to know about. Standards of performance and value can be applied as readily to a toy as to an appliance. Found to be on rates not acceptable. Electrical appliances are always carefully checked for possible shock hazards. Safety on the highway is evidenced by CU's continuing campaign for devices like the automobile seat belt and for their improvement. Manufacturers often react to CU's negative ratings by improving their products. This is attested by many letters CU has received from the companies themselves. With the hundreds of thousands of brands and models of consumer goods found in today's marketplace, CU obviously cannot test and report on them all. No one organization could do that. But CU tests as many brands and models as it can afford to, within the context of its readers' indicated interests. Beyond this, CU provides general buying guidance and informed evaluations of many products by types as well as by brands. And aside from its test reports, CU always gives the consumer as much reliable information as it can assemble on pricing, distribution, and other trade practices, which may also affect the consumer's judgment as to the desirability and suitability of a product. In the case of packaged stereo phonographs, 35 individual brands and models have been undergoing their laboratory tests. Now the time has come to review the data from these tests at one of the periodic meetings of the CU project team. With the first results in hand, the writer can begin blocking out his story and at the same time answered by the technical or marketing members of the team. Many important questions will be answered, of course, by the comparative listening tests. Testing, too. While a thin curtain obscures the machines from view, identical records will be played over each of the two systems. The panel will, of course, hear only one phonograph at a time, with the music coming alternately from one source or the other.
The soundproof double doors of the acoustically silent room weigh half a ton each. To keep them sealed tightly, air is exhausted from the space between the doors. In comparing the sound produced by the machines, the members of the jury are asked to consider a number of different sound characteristics. In turn, each listener operates a selector device to switch back and forth between the two machines. The selector is checked and the test begins. his judgments independently and without discussion with his fellow listeners. With both laboratory and subjective evaluations completed, the research phase of the package stereo inquiry comes to a close. The writer now drafts the report, incorporating all the test data and market information, and including CU's unique ratings of all the models tested as acceptable or not acceptable, with outstandingly good brands check rated and outstanding values listed as best buys. Consumer reports are written in clear, understandable English, avoiding wherever possible the use of technical jargon, always sticking to hard facts and avoiding vague generalizations and lofty language. From the duplicating room, copies of the report are distributed for checking. Before it gets into print, this report must undergo the scrutiny of almost a dozen people are checked word for word by the technical department, editorial department, library, market information staff, and very often by special consultants. Each check has the same objectives, to make sure the report will be accurate, useful, and a fair statement of the facts as found. After corrections are made in the copy, it is sent to be set in type, returning first in galley sheet form and later in the form of page proofs. At each of these steps, the same stringent reviewing and checking takes place with frequent consultations. The editors once more scrutinize the article as a whole in a phase called editing in proof, which sometimes occasions drastic cuts or revisions. To CU's editors, it is never too late to make a change if it will advance their ideal of accuracy and clarity. The painstaking process, which has finally resulted in approval, reflects the magazine's high standards and insistence on accuracy, readability, and thoroughness, no matter what the cost in time and patience. Final page proofs are made up and submitted to the art director for a layout check. Now the pages are ready to be sent to the printer, where still another review will be made by CU editors before the issue goes on the press. This was one report on a single test project. The work and thought that went into it are fairly representative of what goes into each test project in consumer reports, whatever its subject.
reading it, the subscriber will find out whether or not a packaged stereo phonograph will suit his audio needs, and if so, which of the many makes and models is for him. And in just this way, for all of the reports that readers get each year, CU seeks to provide answers to the consumer's buying questions, to give consumers the facts they want and need to know, independently and without bias. Of course, CU has never considered itself the only spokesman for the spending public, whose interests are much too varied for a single voice. As the largest organization of its kind, however, CU has a responsibility to speak up for the consumer interest, to represent it and advance it as well and as often as possible. And so, through the years, CU's board and staff members have testified at governmental hearings affecting the consumer interest. A familiar figure on these occasions is the man who has been president of Consumers Union since its founding, Dr. Colston Warren, professor of economics at Amherst College. His appearance this time was at the invitation of the chairman of the Federal Trade Commission, who had called a conference to discuss deceptive advertising practices. Dr. Warren was asked, to suggest what might be done within existing law to correct fictitious advertising and price baiting. Often before laws are passed, CU representatives are in attendance at congressional committee hearings to give, by request, advice and information. Wherever they appear, those who speak on behalf of CU do so with the same objectivity, the same freedom from special interests, and the same dedication to the consumer that characterize the test reports. CU representatives have testified on subjects as diverse as methods of cigarette testing, price-fixing laws, monopoly practices, meat grading, government regulation of radio and television, and the hazards of radioactive fallout. Under the direction of Irving Michelson, a Department of Public Service Projects was set up to study a new category of problems consumers face in an industrial society, such as air pollution, water pollution, and the rise in automobile accidents. This program and other CU activities benefit greatly from voluntary contributions of time and effort from scientists, engineers, and organizations, among them CU's own National Educational Advisory Committee. Radioactive fallout in milk and other foods has been under study for CU at an independent consulting laboratory used also by the Atomic Energy Commission. One of the original tests studied milk samples from different cities to discover how much they contained of strontium-90, a dangerous byproduct of atomic explosions. Milk and food samples for another pioneering study were collected from 26 cities with the cooperation of leading universities, and the amount of strontium present was determined at the laboratory by a combination of biochemical and radiological techniques. When the radiation in each city's sample was isolated and measured, the results showed that, while the general American diet is still safe, greatly increased government testing and research are needed to probe a health hazard of which the full extent is still unknown. CU's concern for public health problems is a continuing one. The Health and Medicine Department of the Monthly Reports seeks to differentiate genuine advances in medical science from the so-called miracles hailed in drug advertising. One of the most popular departments, Economics for the Consumer, provides a continuing report to readers on their economic environment. Consumers Union does not engage in lobbying, but it can and does help to define the consumer interest and to ensure that it and some of the major problems besetting it will be known. 
At CU's Mount Vernon headquarters, there is now a permanent education center under the direction of Florence Mason. Here, visitors become acquainted with the worldwide movement of consumer organizations, now established in more than 20 countries. Through the International Office of Consumers' Unions, information is exchanged so that each member organization can benefit from the other's experience and testing methods. CU has given small grants to help some of the foreign organizations get started. The displays in CU's exhibit include factual, eye-catching information for teachers and their classes, women's clubs, trade unions, and many others, as well as simple information too often overlooked by individual buyers. A trip to Consumers Union is now frequently on the itinerary of foreign guests of our government visiting American institutions. In another aspect of the public education program, key people such as Mrs. Jean Whitehill, assistant to the director, go out to visit groups around the country to explain what Consumers Union is trying to accomplish. Those who have watched the growth of Consumers Union in the years since 1936 have seen a crusade to inform the consumer, catch the imagination of the American public. CU began with a staff of 15 people, each paid $10 a week, all sharing the burdens of research, reporting, correspondence, and circulation. Today, these activities are handled by specialized departments of a major publishing organization whose staff numbers over 200. The first issue of Consumer Reports in 1936 went to some 3,000 members. Now, in its 25th year, the magazine's circulation is getting close to a million each month, with a total readership estimated at approximately 4 million. It is for its readers alone that CU's reports are published, and CU opposes, by legal action if necessary, any commercial exploitation of its name, its test results, or its ratings. For men and women in all walks of life, Consumers Union has grown to be an authoritative, reliable voice, providing a democratic people with facts they need for intelligent and free choice in the spending of their money. The watchfulness and above all, the integrity of Consumers Union are two of the many checks and balances needed in our free enterprise society. For many of its readers, Consumers Union holds a more personal value. As one subscriber said, in a world where competitive claims often overshadow the truth, CU is one organization we can look to and trust. <laughs>